Welcome to Tech Topics brought to you by Cybervenger. We help keep small businesses stay protected and compliant with cutting edge cybersecurity and IT solutions. Hello everyone, my name is Andy. I'm the managing consultant for Cybervenger. Today I'm doing another deep dive into the 110 controls of the NIST 800-171. This standard protects controlled unclassified information. If you're doing business with the Department of Defense or f other federal government departments, you probably need to be following this already. We've got a great video that explains why and what, where, when, who and when and all that. Uh, check that out because uh, it's uh, definitely uh, very important to do that. Um, our control today, if you look down here, is 3.13.4. It says that we need to prevent the unauthorized and unintended information transfer, transfer via shared system resources. If you look at the extended uh, version here, it talks about um, registers, cache memory, main memory, disks, hard disk, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll summarize what all that means, and I'll give some, a real-world example of what this kind of is. So if you are using a computer that other people can access at some point or something outside your profile, you need to make sure that you think about where the CUI is visible, where it's not, how it's accessible. If you are using, say, a terminal serve or something similar, where multiple users are remoted and some of the users are authorized, some of them are not, you need to make sure that the applications using do not write to temporary errors that other users can get. For example, see Windows temp. If you're dumping temp files there and other users can access C Windows temp, that's a no-no. You have to think about how the applications are architected and test for that sort of thing. The problem with this control is a lot of it's not system related. You really have to interview your vendors and talk to them about, hey, this is the control. Have you looked at your own application? Have you looked at how the memory is stored? Is, is memory you know, writable and readable from, from other users? Um, let's take a look at KeyPass versus Excel. So there's a program that I've recommended many times to people for keeping their passwords locally. If you don't trust cloud services, you want to keep it under your own control, but you want a password manager, you would want to use KeyPass. You don't want to use Microsoft Excel. Why? Because of this control right here. Microsoft Excel will can be password protected. In fact, even the modern versions of Excel even have pretty decent encryption. I think they also use a AES-256, which is... FIP certified, it, it's good enough for, for the encryption called for in NIST 800-171. But the problem is that the temporary files are not encrypted. and It'll write them out to wherever. There's no guarantee that those temp fire files are not accessible by the wrong users. And those temp files could contain data, including the passwords themselves. It's not architected for that kind of reason. Excel's not meant that way. Whereas KeyPass is explicitly designed that way. It even protects a clipboard. If you try and pa pass, copy a password to memory temporarily, it'll time out after a given period of time. You can configure it. You can go a little longer, a little shorter, depending on how you choose. But it will wipe the memory clean. So it protects where it goes in memory. It doesn't write temp files that contain the passwords to hard disk. It's designed with, well, this control of mine, to be quite frankly. Um, and there's other programs that do that kind of thing. You want to make sure that you don't configure a group policy to change where your temp files go outside of your profile. You could do that. There are settings where if you're logged in, you have temp files and scratch files, you put to a single central place. Sometimes people do that kind of thing for, for performance. They'll have a small cache drive that's SSD and they'll point everybody's temp files there and um, they, without a whole lot of regard to security. You have to consider the temp files and sections of memory or other places that information could end up You want to, in a shared system. So if you're using a shared system, you have to lock it down better than you might otherwise have to do if it was a single user using that system. And uh, that's basically what this control is talking about. It doesn't go a lot uh, in terms of description of exact examples of this. So I think the examples I gave are really the only things I can think of off the top of my head. So you got temp files you got to worry about. There's RAM, system memory you got to worry about. Um, there are uh, you know, basically temp files and RAM. <laughs> Uh, the, another example of this that might be that would probably apply is the Spectre bug that came out a while ago, uh, quite a while ago, the big one where there's a flaw, long since known, long existing but little known flaw where users in a shared system could access memory registers and such, with uh, specially crafted commands because of a flaw in the CPU itself. It's a hardware flaw, 
Uh, it's been tricky to try and work around systems of lost performance because of patches and things like that. You don't hear much of it these days, but it was really a big deal when it first came out. I suspect it's still kind of a big deal. People are kind of trying to architect around it. But uh, that's another example of something that would apply to 3.13.4. So I hope that gives you an idea what to look out for. This is a very general control, more just reminding you of something to watch out for. Um, and that's really all I got this week, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next control. Thanks for watching. We hope this video has provided valuable information to you. Be sure to share this video with other small business owners to spread the word about the importance of cybersecurity. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. If you want more information about cybersecurity visit us at www.cybervenger.com.